my Python runtime went from 1.02 seconds to 0.000027 seconds. That's over a 100% increase in performance. How was I able to achieve that? The answer is caching. Caching is a fundamental concept in computer science that's used at multiple abstraction levels. It's actually also used um, in your hardware inside your CPU. Now, before we look at caching, we'll look at how things are done without caching. Say that you have an application um, that needs to access an API. Uh, it makes a request to the API. The API does some, does some processing. And a while later, it returns the result. Now, with caching, it's actually quite similar, um, where the first call would actually uh, call the API um, and it would do some, some processing. Um, but on the way back, it would, uh, it would store the result um, uh, somewhere uh, in, in some sort of storage. This is also known as the cache. Uh, and, this, and, and this means that in subsequent uh, requests, um, the application is simply going to retrieve uh, the stored result from the cache um, instead of calling the API. So it's basically just a way to save time since you already have the result stored. So you're just basically just retrieving uh, the result um, instead of having to, to call the API again and having it uh, do all of that expensive computation. The way we're going to implement this is by using decorator functions. I made a video about decorator functions a while ago where I'll go into depth. If you're interested to learn more about them, I'll link the video up here. Um, for now, let's look at some code. All the code is available on, on my GitHub repo. I'll, just, I'll link it in the description below. Um, for now, I'll just go through, I'll do like a quick overview of the code. So this is just like a very simple API in fast API, where the idea is that we just have a single endpoint um, and you give it a location. And based on the location, um, it's going to return the weather. And for the weather, I just have a simple weather dict, um, uh, a weather dictionary uh, with, with locations along with, uh, so it's like a nested dictionary where you have the location and then you have the date followed by uh, these uh, emojis for, uh, for the weather conditions. And it's just running on port 8000. So the other part is where is, is the application, uh, so to speak, where we are actually um, calling uh, the API. So the idea here is that we have this fetch data from API uh, function, which is responsible for, for hitting uh, the API endpoint and simply returning the response. And the idea is that, so we do a first call and we also timing uh, the call. So the idea is that we do a call um, where we where we get data for Copenhagen uh, and then we just figure out and, and, and then we just calculate uh, basically that lapse time and then we do a sleep uh, for one second and and do a second call um, and then also uh, we just get the result along with the time it took. Now the idea here is that we can we can cache the results um, and thereby we can reduce the amount of time it takes uh, to make these calls. So the second call would, would basically be instantaneous since it's just going to look up um, the value um, from the stored um, cache instead of having to hit uh, the API endpoint. And we're also just using a, a sleep of one second to simulate uh, a request delay uh, since this is a very simple API. So in reality, it wouldn't really give, a, give much of a delay. So to start with, I will run um, the, the fast API app. Okay, it's now running. And this is, so, so this is basically before caching, right? Um, and for that, I'll just uh, start by, yeah, we'll just run it and then we'll just see. So we can see that the first call took uh, 1.02 seconds and the second call also took around the same time. Now, to implement caching, uh, we simply just import this func tools. It's available in the Python standard library. And we need to add this at symbol and then say func tools.cache. And this is going to cache the results. So if we rerun this, you will see that the second call is instantaneous 0 0.0076. So you might have noticed a problem here. Uh, with caching, we're assuming that the data doesn't actually change a lot with time, but we know from the real world that a lot of data uh, changes extensively with time. So we have everything from from, fi from financial data, you know, you have stock market prices constantly going up and down. Um, you also have um, weather data, you know, you have temperature and humidity changing a lot uh, by the hour and the minute. Um, and you also have um, all sorts of traffic data, um, you know, with, with the number of cars passing, uh, traffic jams and all of that, um, that really is, you know, dependent on, uh, on the time domain. So the question is, how do we cater um, for these 
for these real-time sort of um, data sources. Um, and the answer to that is something called uh, time to live in caching. So the idea is that after a certain amount of time has passed, we reset the cache and we ask and we basically ask it to update um, with, with new information. And the way we do this in Python is uh, we use uh, a library called Cache Tools. I already have it installed, but you can install it uh, with pip. I'll also link it in the description. So I've just made some changes in the code to simulate the passing of time. So the idea is that after the first call is done, we wait like uh, a couple of more seconds. So we wait three seconds before doing the second call. And the idea is that we want the first call to be done on like uh, a particular date, let's say today, and we want the second call to, to be done uh, the next day. Um, and so for that, we just have like uh, this variable called calls in the, in the, in the API. Um, and then if, it, if it's the first call, we just set the date to today. And if it's the second call, then we set the date to tomorrow. Um, so, so in this way, we're basically simulating uh, the passing of a day. Um, and so what we really want here is that, so I'll just run this um, and, and you'll see that the first response um, is sunny, uh, which is correct since that's, uh, you know, today. Uh, and you'll see that the second one is actually also returning sunny, which is wrong since we want it to return uh, uh, the rainy forecast. Um, and the problem here is that we're not actually getting in here uh, since uh, since the cache uh, is uh, is kicking in and it's simply returning um, like the stored result from from before. So to fix this, um, we're going to be using the cache tools library um, and we're just going to, I'll just comment this out. So we're just going to set the TTL, that's the time to live to two seconds. So the idea here is that after we have done the first call, um, the cache, uh, so in between doing the first call and the second call, the cache is getting reset. Uh, so with time it's getting reset. And then the next day, you know, it's going to uh, fetch the new data from the API instead of using uh, the old, you know, stale data. Um, so the idea is that it's actually going to go into this else statement here and it's going to return uh, rainy as the forecast. So I'll just run this to confirm it. Um, and you also notice that it takes actually, um, just let it run. So it takes actually the same amount of time as before since we aren't using the cache here and it's actually hitting uh, the API endpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video. Um, I apologize for the, for the sound. There is a lot of echo in the room that I'm in uh, and I'll try to fix it um, by, uh, by the next video. Um, see you guys uh, next time. Uh, like and subscribe if you, if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you would like me to dive deeper into the world of caching. See you.